Hello, everybody. Justin Stivers here. Thank you guys for tuning in, listening to another episode of The Stivers Show. Talking today, this is kind of a part two uh, where I was talking about goal setting in a previous episode. And this one is what I call the discipline to make those goals happen. So a lot of times, you know, I think we set these big goals and then, you know, you think about, I don't know, like, getting in shape at the beginning of the year. And then you go to, you, you buy new workout clothes, you go to the gym for like a month and then it fades, you know, fades away and you're kind of like in and out of going to the gym for the rest of the year until the new year starts again. And then you're really motivated again. Same with goal setting. I think, you know, again, in that episode, I talk about, you know, being, I'm a big believer in in goal setting. I think it's, you know, absolutely necessary on, on so many levels, on personal level, professional level, financial level, um, but again, we, we come up with these goals and then how do we actually make them happen? And I think, you know, I, to my credit, you know, I, I do, I think I get a lot of stuff done in a relatively short amount of time. And, and I have people ask me, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you do so much, right? How are you able to write these books and keep your podcast going and have a large caseload and staff, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not really through sheer willpower. Right. Willpower. Uh, I, you know, for me, for example, I have a insane uh, sweet tooth where I am almost powerless when it comes to stopping myself from eating sweets, cookies, whatever it is. I, I just, you know, love them. We had a had a run there, which is, you know, I'm getting a little bit better, but where I'm ordering, um, you know, Grubhub, Postmates, uh, cookies from this place in Miami I love called um night out cookies or wherever. And I had to like, you know, stop myself because it was just getting ridiculous. But so it's not willpower where, where I'm able to get a lot of stuff done. I, I think it, it's for me, it's what I would maybe say self-imposed discipline. It's, it's creating the structure where it's almost like I have to, I have to do those things because if it's just me, waking up every single day and saying, okay, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to get this done. I'm, pr- you know, it's really hard to make yourself do those things, right? Saying, you know, again, working out is, is a great example of it. It's like, you can kind of force yourself for a little while, but at some point, if you miss one day, it's easier to miss the second day. And then maybe you go back, but then you miss, you know, three days and it's harder to go back until finally you just keep telling yourself a story as to, it was a long day. I don't need to go. I'm tired. I've, I've got too much work. Like right now is not a good time, whatever it is. And it's, it's the same with gold. So in this, you know, what I'm going to suggest are just really two, two things that I think are take home things that you can implement that will really, that pair well with the goal setting that I think can help you help basically push you into making your goals happen. Because again, I don't think you can just will it. I don't think just really wanting something, you know, is enough to, it will work for a little while, right? You can really motivate yourself for a little while, but at some point that motivation is going to kind of fade out, or it's just going to be really difficult to to keep the momentum going, unless you have some sort of tool or something in place that will, again, push you, propel you to, to do the things you have to do in order to reach your goals. So two things that I'm going to suggest. The first is, I think you have to review, this is kind of on the motivation piece. And even though I was just saying, you know, motivation alone isn't going to do it. I think you have to, you know, have to motivate yourself and know where you're going. So, so the first relatively, actually, I don't know if I would say it's simple, but something that I think everyone should do is set time each week to just to review your goals. Right. So I think you need an hour. um, I've, read some people who say you need to, you know, have, you know, four hours of like uninterrupted time where you're just kind of like reviewing your goals. It is really hard to just, for me to just sit still for like an hour, two hours, four hours. I can't even imagine where I'm just like thinking and, you know, kind of projecting about the future where I want to be the life I want to have. That would be tough. Maybe I'll get there one, one day. I'm not there yet. I'd usually take about an hour once a week. I get out of the office I go somewhere. I usually go to Starbucks pre COVID times. I used to go to like nice hotels and, uh, and like sit in the lobby 
or maybe get like breakfast at like a nice restaurant or something, just somewhere different environment, somewhere that's like kind of inspiring, you know, motivating, whatever works for you, right? I would say not your office, don't have your computer, don't have your phone near you. You need to go somewhere where it's like kind of, again, may, I kind of like to have people around me just to like, I, I don't know, like that energy, but not necessarily to like chat and talk with and whatnot and, and be distracted. So I will go once a week, it's on my calendar every Friday morning. I have it titled as big picture thinking. And so for that hour, hour and a half, I'm just kind of like reviewing my big picture goals, my short term goals. I'm just kind of like thinking, where do I want to go? What do I want to be doing? What do I want my life to be looking like? What do I want my, you know, my business to look like? And I'm just kind of thinking a lot of times I'll just start by just I always have a notepad, a journal, and I'll just kind of free, you know, start thinking and just write it out. Whatever comes up, I just start writing and that will lead to something else. And then maybe I'll, you know, follow a, follow a path of like, Hey, you know, it'd be really cool if we were living in this area, what would it look like to be able to, you know, to move the family there and live there and have, a, you know, whatever it is. And then, it, and it's just reflecting on all the goals that I've already set and just kind of, reigniting that that fire every week just to remember like hey oh this is why i'm doing it did you have a bad week yeah this was kind of why i like friday because friday i try as much as i try i try to make it kind of like my my chill day even though fridays for me tend to be a little bit hectic after this period after this brainstorming period um but i like on fridays you know to you know you have the stress of the week where you've probably been running a million miles all over the place and so it's a good opportunity for me to like sit there and just kind of remember why it is I'm doing the things that I do to kind of reinvigorate me um, and just keep me, you know, keep the goals in check. And every week, the goals might not shift from week to week, but over a period of time, they might shift, which again, in that podcast, I talk about goals. I think that's fine. I think there's nothing, you know, I think that's, that's going to happen. Um, but it's, it's, it's interesting to see because you know, if my, my goals one week are, if I just happen to maybe be struggling with, let's say getting more clients. And so I know I need to be doing, I need to be doing more marketing stuff. Well, maybe my, my mind is going to race to other types of like big picture marketing ideas. And so this, you know, you can use this however you want. And I'm kind of always tweaking it. Sometimes I'm thinking like big picture, like, Hey, five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, what do I want my life to look by? like? Some weeks it's a little bit more granular of like, hey, I want to be doing these types of marketing activities. I want to do this with the podcast or whatever it is. Um, so it really depends. But I think each week you should, or a recommendation maybe, is you know take some time out of the office, out of the home, wherever your normal space is. Go somewhere a little bit different. Take a pen, take a paper, piece, you know, notebook or whatever, and just kind of think big picture for a little while. So that's you know. Again, it sounds easier than it is. The hard part first, make the time, put it on your calendar, keep that as like sacred calendar where, you know, sacred time where you know every week you're going to be doing that. It is a little bit hard to sit there for like an hour. Don't bring your computer, don't bring your phone so you're not tempted to be like scrolling email. This is like very much try to be off the grid just working on stuff, working on big picture thinking. So that's number one. The second thing that I think is really what works for me, it's gonna sound very simple, but it's the calendar. I live, breathe, eat, think, do everything by the, by the calendar, right? And when I don't, stuff doesn't get done. I freak out, I feel anxious. Um, the calendar is just an amazing tool to help you achieve your goals, right? I think, we, I think most people just kind of use a calendar here and there, for some appointments, you know, maybe big, big, you know, personal appointments like a doctor's appointment, dentist, whatever, some phone calls, you know, if your, you know, your work requires you to go to court or a showing or an appointment with a client, we use it like that. But we don't really use it, I don't think, to its full potential to really help us push us forward to achieving our goals. And what I mean by that is that there's something ingrained in us that when it's on the calendar, 
and I don't think it's just me. I mean, it, it does work for me, but I know it's for other people as well. So people who I know really use their calendar, I think feel this way is that when you have something on your calendar that you've put on there and you've made it, you know, this is unbreakable. Like this is, this is what's going to happen during 10 AM to 11 AM. You have a much better chance of doing that thing than if it wasn't on the calendar. So if one of your goals, you know, I speak with a lot of people who want to do a podcast, right. Or who want to do more social media marketing, whatever it is, but they say, Hey, I don't, I don't have the time or it's something I want to get started. Well, the fact that you want to do it. Okay, great. But realistically, how long have you been saying that? It's really, I think it's really hard to wake up on a Tuesday and see some white space on your calendar and then decide, oh, now's the time that I'm going to start working on my podcast, right? And you sit down at the computer or your notepad or whatever, and you map out what that looks like, or you just start filming, whatever it is. But if you have on your calendar that Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., you're going to work on, you know, what what audience do you want to reach on your podcast and how often do you want to do it? And so during that time, you think about those two things, who do I want to reach? Uh, and, and what's, what's my, what's the podcast about, I guess, you know, so who, who's your audience and what are you going to talk about? Great. So the, during that time, and then you schedule out for next week, next Tuesday, 10 to 11, you want to work on um, how frequently are you going to do it? And you just keep adding, you know, little things, maybe, you know, from 10 to 11, you're probably not going to map out the next, you know, year of your podcast, but you can map out little things and just keep adding to the calendar. And when you see, when you see it on the calendar, you give yourself a much better chance of actually getting those things done. So if your goals are, you know, if they're big picture or even small picture, you know, or smaller uh, or more, what's the word I'm looking for? More, um, like specific, like you, you want to write a book. Let's say one of your goals is to write a book. You can look at your calendar and put pieces out over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months of what needs to happen. And, you know, again, it's probably not going to happen every Wednesday at 9 a.m., but you could look at your calendar for the next 90 days and map out what you're going to do every Wednesday or every week to help you finish that book. And, I'm pretty sure if you stick to that, you're going to get very far along uh, with actually writing that book. Or if big picture is, you know, you want to have X amount of clients, then you can work your way backwards and pick out the type of marketing activities that you think you need to do in order to reach those goals to have X amount, to, to have the amount of clients that you want. And so having, you know, having that calendar is, is huge. Um, I just don't think you can accomplish near as much um, without it. And I think the amount that you can accomplish with the, with the calendar is just, it's incredible. So, you know, what I do, I look at my calendar. Um, well, I guess, you know, one of the things I think that is worth saying is I think a lot of people just kind of get pulled in so many different directions. You wake up, you check your email and that kind of like sends you in one direction or a rat, probably many different directions as you check your email throughout the entire day. And so now you're spending your entire day just responding to emails and playing ping pong as to what comes in. Then you're probably accepting, you might be receiving incoming phone calls that were not scheduled. So now you were working on something, someone calls you, you answer that, that's 30 minutes. And then maybe you answer a text message you know, that's another little bit of time. Then you go check social media for a little bit. And before you know it, you've spent all this time and you really haven't, you maybe feel like you've accomplished a lot, or maybe you feel like you haven't because you've been all over the place, but you feel like you've done a lot at least, but you really haven't moved in the direction of achieving some of those goals. I think people have to be very guarded with their time. Um, you know, and this is something that is ongoing for me. But in my opinion, this is your life. You are not responsible to answer every single incoming call or every single text or every single email just because someone typed urgent and I need you to speak with me. That's not the way I want to live my life. And, and I would imagine most people, given 
you know, if they knew that they didn't, if they felt like they didn't, they would not want to live like that way either. There's a lot of things that I want to accomplish. And if I'm left at the mercy of everybody else who sends me a text message, sends me a phone call, sends me an email, you're never, I'm never going to get anything done or anything. I'm not going to do the things that I want to do that will propel me to the place that, that I want to get to. So I think the first thing, one of the first things you have to do in order to build that discipline to, to, to reach your goals is you have to be very guarded with your time, set up parameters. You know, you could start with, you know, I think one of the easiest, well, it might not be the easiest, but one of the first things to start with is stop taking unexpected incoming calls. And I know that might freak a lot of people out, especially if you're, you know, let's say a realtor who says, you know, well, if I miss this call, the, the client's going to be upset or that's a potential listing or whatever it is. I get it. Listen, I get it. I would put, you know, a lot of pushback on that. Um, I won't go into that there, but here, but one of the first things I would say is take control of those incoming calls. If it's not a scheduled call, you don't have to accept it, right? You can either, if you've got a secretary, have them call them back, answer the call, schedule a time that works for you. And maybe you have preset times on your calendar where you accept incoming calls from existing clients. Maybe every Tuesday, that's like your existing client call days where that's when you, you know, answer all 20 calls that come in. So that way, Monday and Wednesday through the rest of the week, you're not answering all of those client calls and you can focus on other stuff. So I would, I would try as much as you can to limit the unexpected, unplanned, uncalendared incoming calls. Same with emails. Uh, emails. Emails difficult, admittedly for me, but I try to only check and respond to emails at set times. That's an ongoing thing. I'm far from perfect at it. Uh, I have gotten better in terms of not checking email uh, when I get home. And so if I'm at home with my wife, I don't want to be checking my email because I think we've all had that experience of checking an email and you get something that just pisses you off and now it's kind of like ruined your night, right? I just don't, you know, when I get home, not saying I might not be doing other work type of stuff, but email is one thing I don't really want to be checking. So if you can get in, get in control of that, maybe limit, you know, checking that all the time, I think that's huge as well. But I think one of the things you can really do is work on block calendaring. And so this was, you know, talking about this with the not accepting non-scheduled calls is I think you you know, one of the things you can do to really take control of your calendar is set times on your calendar when you do certain things. It's not going to be set in stone. There probably will be exceptions, but as best as you can, you know, maybe every Monday, that's like when you do all of your marketing, if you're in business for yourself, maybe on Mondays, when you do all your social media stuff, you do all your newsletter stuff, you, you know, maybe Thursdays when you meet with potential new clients, uh, if you can set it up like that. But have block time when you do stuff so that your week, you know, you can, those are like the, those are like big pictures. So one activity that, that you could do um, that I've done is you've got, you know, what is it? 168 hours in a week. Um, you know, so look at whatever that is, how many, ever, you know, hours, Monday to Friday, let's say, if that's your, if that's the time that you want to dedicate to this, how many hours each week do you want to dedicate to marketing, how many hours each week do you want to dedicate to sales? How many, mark, how many hours each week do you want to dedicate to the actual doing of the work, to administrative stuff, to managing staff, to whatever, you know, those are, if, if you're not in business for yourself, it could be other things, but how many hours do you want to dedicate to each activity each week? Those are like the big pictures, the, you know, the chapters, I guess, the, the headlines. Put those on the calendar and try to mark, try to, you know, put onto the calendar when those times are best for you. So for example, I do a lot of my good kind of like writing of marketing content in the morning around 5 PM, 4 PM. I'm pretty brain dead. I can't write good content at that point, but like, you know, 7 30 AM to like 10 AM pretty solid. So if I'm going to schedule marketing content writing, that's usually when I'm going to put it on the calendar do that for, for your stuff. Then you know, think about the type of activities that you want to do. So again, I keep using, you know, writing a book. If I know that 
writing a book requires me to actually write the book if I'm writing it myself. And I know that my content writing is when I need to do that. Then I can put those hours, you know, 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as like my content is when I'm gonna start working on my book. And then I just start putting stuff on the calendar over the next couple of weeks, over the next couple of months. So again, it sounds simple. Um, some of you maybe are doing this. I find myself, what I do once a quarter is I'll go back and I'll look at, you know, what, what did my calendar look like, right? What would my goal? Did I want to dedicate 10 hours a week to marketing, five hours a week to sales, whatever it was, did that work this past, this, this past quarter? Do I want to continue that for the quarter that comes up? And then I've got these, you know, big block calendars, you know, the, the block calendar of what the next quarter is going to look like. And then I'll break it down into smaller things. What are the things that I want to do? What are the things that are important to me? Um, do I want to play golf? When and how often do I want to play golf? Where do I want to put that onto my calendar? Do I want to, you know, play guitar? Where, where and when do I want to put that on, on the calendar? Or, you know, date night, when and where do I want to put that on the calendar? And I try to put as much as I can because I have really found that if you have white space, if you have blank space on your calendar, you will not, I guess I shouldn't say you, I will not be as productive. It's a lot easier when you've got, you know, a three hour window from appointments and you've got nothing scheduled to waste time on the internet, watching TV, social media, whatever your, whatever your thing is, it's a lot easier to do something that is not as productive to propel you forward to reach those goals. And that's what this whole thing is about. We are not strong enough, I don't think, to will ourselves to just do all of the things that we know we need to do, that we want to do to get us to where we you know, ultimately want to be. Willpower, willpower will run out. But by using the calendar, I think it's a really effective tool to be able to basically force ourselves. I, I call it you know, self-imposed discipline to, to make these things happen. And I think by putting stuff on the calendar, it really does force you to do it. So I hope that helps. Um, you know, I'm always looking for different ways. Th th those are you know, the, the checking in once a week, the big picture thinking, that's kind of like a motivation piece. Um, and, and the calendar, you know, using it in the way that, that I use it, block calendaring, and then you know, putting the smaller blocks inside of those larger blocks has been very helpful for me, helped me get a lot done. I'm sure there's a lot of other things. Maybe you are, maybe you use a, a planner, um, maybe you use a task system, whatever it is, find something that works for you. But, you know, once you've really gotten good at doing goal setting, I think you have to find a way to, to help yourself implement them, whatever it is, because again, I don't think willpower will, will be enough, but love to hear your, all co your, your comments, leave your comments, um, you know, down below. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Take care.